What's up everybody? So today in this, what we're going to be doing is designing, just designing a lead tracking system in Miro for Airtable. So this is going to be built out in an Airtable base, but this is often, I feel the part that people miss is the prep work that goes into designing a base. So in this, we're going to be doing the layout of some of the tables in a base. Uh, and this is going to be a lead part lead tracker and then bleed into the, the customer journey for as they sign up so that you can really integrate that whole process. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. And what we do is we have business owners by just like you, help you optimize your information systems. That's the stuff like Airtable, Asana, Slack, uh, Airtable for asset management, a CRM, uh, Asana for project management, Slack for communications. So if you're interested in any services, you can check out the link down in the description, request a consultation from me or someone on my team. And without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So as you can see, now we're in Miro, and this is just a real simple dashboard. So I'm just gonna be kind of creating from scratch what I would try to, what you should be trying to include in your leads tracker Airtable base. And so this is really going to be uh, across, I'm gonna try to incorporate as many systems as I can uh, for as many use cases as I can. So this one in particular is the leads tracker. So I'm gonna be using these boxes like this one. Uh, so I like this one. So the first thing that you'll need is a leads table. Now what this is going to give you, whereas like if you were in Excel or Sheets, is you're going to be able to keep track of different types of data in different places. So the first one is going to be the core information about the lead. So this one would be leads table. And so in a leads table, what you might have is you might have an email, a phone number, and you might have a full name. And the other fields are things that you would need to identify the, like if they're a hot lead, if they're a cold lead, um, how a warm lead, all of those prospecting fields. This is where you put all your custom fields. So custom fields go in here. So that's the first step. Now with the leads table, some like you for a lead tracker, you want to be tracking like your interactions with the lead. You want to be tracking uh, any payments. You want to be checking consultations and all of that. So if you think about leads in relation to interactions with them, one lead might have multiple interactions with with someone on your team. So what you now would want to include is interactions. So I'll add another table here for interactions. So this one is going to be interactions table. And what you might include in here is the date of the interaction. You might also include the uh, platform that it was on. So like, for example, email, was it an email? Was it a phone call? Uh, was it a text message? So uh, platform. Another thing is maybe what you talked about. So topic. And then something very key here is you would want to include your follow-up steps. So like what, what was the next step? Is it, is like the next step a proposal? Is the next step uh, this is where you get to be creative with like, what did you talk about and what's coming next? So next steps, because for every interaction, there's going to be next steps, uh, whether that's just continuing the interaction on another day, this is just where you can come in here and make this really easy for you to see in the future. So those are the first two tables. Now here, these interactions, this is where it connects to the leads table. So, I signify this by a one-to-many relationship so the interactions roll up into the leads table. Uh, so now what's another one that you might have? So you also might have the people on your sales team. So for a sales team, you might want to have another table to keep track of your sales team. So this one is going to be sales team, or this one might be just your whole team. So in here, you would want to keep track of the salesperson's name you would want to keep track of their email and any other pertinent information about the person on your team. So when you have an interaction with someone, it's if it's not if 
it's, if you're more than a solopreneur, if you have maybe one or two people on your sales team, you would want to be keeping track of who on your sales team is making the interaction. So in the interactions table, you want to be ke keeping track of who that salesperson was on your team that is making that interaction. So one salesperson might have many interactions, uh, but one interaction only goes to one salesperson. So we're gonna link these up right here with another relationship right here. So these, these tables are connected. Now, another thing you might have is you might have uh, one person who is like the main contact for a lead. So if you wanted to have another field in here, main contact for a lead, then I would include, an, include another relationship between the leads table and the sales table. So this one, if there's just one contact there, that's the main point person that you wanna be track, keeping track of. Uh, that one person should be held accountable for that lead uh, to make sure they follow through your progression. Uh, I would include that relationship there so you can connect those. Now, another thing you might want to be keeping track of are different types of interactions. So the interactions table itself can be very generic for uh, just your general interactions, the common ones like email, phone call. But I often like to keep a separate table for um, like your sales calls. So what I would call these, I call these consultations. Uh, so I like to include a, another table in here for consultations. And this is where you get into a lot of your sales call questions. You get into a lot more detail uh, than just a simple interaction. So this one would be consultations table. And in here, you would wanna be keeping track of the lead. You would wanna be keeping track of the date. You would wanna be keeping track of who the sales member was. And you would also want to be keeping track of any of your key qualifiers from the sales call. So these would be sales call questions. And I find it very, uh, very beneficial for teams to keep this separate. Uh, that way you can see these at a glance easier. You don't have to dig through a bunch of interactions, but these are still linked up to the leads table and they're also linked up to the sales team. So similar to these interactions over here, they're just a different type of interaction. They usually have a lot more custom fields than just a simple interaction, which is why I like to keep them separate. You're not uh, bogging down this table uh, with uh, not to say less quality of an interaction, but that's how I typically keep these separate. So the next one that you might want to keep track of is one, if you're on a sales call with someone, you might want to send them an invoice. You might want to send them a proposal. So think about the relationships between these entities and your leads table, because the leads table is the core of what you're gonna be tracking here. So what I like to connect up to a leads table because uh, in a business, it, it's customer centric. That you revolve around, the, you don't have a business if you don't have customers. So what I like to include here is a invoices table or just a like any, anything you send them for payment, um, include that here. And the reason why I include this as a separate table from the leads table is because one lead might have several invoices over the time that they're a customer. So this one right here is invoices. And invoices, so like obviously an invoice can be paid or not paid, so you would want to be keeping track of a few things. So the amount, the, and this is important. So this is assuming you just have one piece on the invoice. If you have line items on the invoice, I would add another table over here for the line items of the invoice. Uh, but for just an invoice with just one price on it, uh, just one package, that's what we're doing here in, in this example to not complicate it too much. Uh, but you would want to have date sent and date paid and status. So as we said, the one lead might have multiple invoices, but one invoice is only ever linked to one lead. So you can see here this whole database is really revolving around just this one leads table. So once you have that, this is where you really start building out your leads table more. So 
I'll make this a little bit bigger and we're gonna add some more fields in here. So one thing you can do now is once you start really using this, you have more invoices in here, you can add a roll up to find, uh, it's just a, a roll up to see the total amount paid. So it's like the lifetime value of a customer or just their, their value that they brought to your business. So of the profit, we'll say profit. So another thing you can roll up in here is you can roll up the date of your last interaction. So date of last interaction. And the way you would do this is you would use a roll up of the link to the interactions table and find the maximum date. So that's just a real simple way of explaining that one. Uh, it'll give you your most recent interaction and then I would also have a formula for rotting time. So the rotting time is going to allow you to, uh, you'll use a date time diff formula and you'll take the date of the last interaction to today and you'll find the difference of that in days. So you can see uh, who you reached out to most re recently, if it's been like two weeks since an interaction uh, you can prompt yourself to, uh, you can have it like enter a view after a certain number of days and get a notification, whether it's an email or Slack or what have you to send, to make sure you follow up with that lead. Um, so another thing in here you want to have is status. So the status is the status of them in your CRM process. So like common statuses are like pre-consultation, uh, awaiting additional information, uh, awaiting proposal, closed one, closed lost. So I think those are pretty common ones. And what you can have here is these ones will, these ones can be very automated. Uh, whether you're using like uh, email provider, uh, you can automate emails into your base, have them automatically link up. So this one doesn't take any time. Uh, another thing you can do is automate any text messages and actually some f phone calls or voicemails through using uh, Zapier and uh, whether it's like Twilio or CallRail or some applications like that, this table can be very automated. This table, however, I would also include the status in here. So this one, I think we forgot to add it, uh, but we'll include two, two more things in this consultations. So you want to have the next steps here as well as the status. So what I often like to do, so you don't have to be updating information in multiple places, is once there's a status update here, it updates the status of the leads table. That way, oftentimes, like if you have a sales call, it works really well to have a form that feeds into the consultation table that is kind of an outline of your sales call script uh, where you can input key information that the client answers. It's a efficient way of taking notes that I've found. Um, and if you include that status in there, it can automatically update the leads table. So these are just a few things so far. Uh, the, this table can also be very automated. So the invoices can automatically be added to the invoices table if you're using anything that connects with Zapier. So like Stripe, Wave, QuickBooks, um, etc. Those can all be updated in here when they're created so that you can track the routing time on those. So you might want to be keeping track of the routing time which again is that same uh, formula here, the date time diff between the date it was sent and today, uh, assuming that the status is not paid. So this will really give you some nice reporting. You can see like, uh, you can create a view of all of the invoices that are not paid. You can create a, a Kanban view of your leads and move them through the statuses easily here. And you can also really optimize your sales process by using uh, what I found just a form um, and in here something else that I like to use here is if you are based online and you do your sales calls online what you can have is a uh, place for a link in here so if you record your sales calls on loom or on like cloud app then you can have that in here to reference later so cloud app. so then what you can do and I'm not gonna get into the reporting a lot in this video but you can create some reporting tables to see um, 
I guess another thing real quick is the duration of that call. Uh, but you can see what duration of the sales call led to a closed lead or how many interactions do we have before someone is closed, uh, closed one specifically. Um, what are the types of custom fields that indicate someone being like ending up in the closed loss status um, and a lot of stuff like that. So having a proper setup of these tables is really going to enable you to make these better decisions because it's going to give you insights into the data uh, that is actually driving people's decisions. So this is just the introduction to designing your database. And if you want to just go ahead, these are all tables. So I would build out these tables with a lot of these same fields. Uh, that way you can automate a lot of the follow-ups. So like if you had a status where they didn't show up to a sales call, you can have a automated email to uh, follow up with them. If they have a status where they're uh, closed one, you can have a onboarding automation. If you have a status where uh, they're um, awaiting a proposal, you can have your proposal template created, linked up into their leads record. You can do a lot of fun stuff once you have a good structure there. So this is just the basics. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, if one thing you might need help with is that date time diff formula. So if you come right here to this video on the end screen, it'll go walk you through that date time diff formula. Uh, that way you can create those formulas with ease. And if you want any of this stuff set up in your business, if you just want to save the time, not have to create all this manually, as well as get all the extra automations that I've been talking about, you can request a consultation down in the description. But I really highly encourage you to go check that out. Try building this on your own uh, because it's really a very empowering thing that I've found for people to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.